like the eagle watching the direction of the wind and then it spreads its wings that's what we call soaring it does not fly the eagle soars behold now this is a very powerful information i was shapen in iniquity that means when my father met with my mother what happened there was not just biology there was the dna of sin that followed already as that baby was growing he was growing with the possibilities for every kind of sin please listen you have to get this most people think the things that destroy them are land it's not true the things that destroy are not land they are activated it is resident within man you need to listen so that you will understand the pathway that has been created I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me next verse thou desirest truth in the inward parts and in the hidden parts thou shalt make me to know wisdom uh-huh let's hurry up media purge me with high soap and I shall be clean the psalmist is praying wash me and I shall be whiter than snow I wonder what that looks like make me to hear joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice thy face from my sins and blot out my iniquities verse 10 it says create in me this is a scripture create in me a clean heart create in me a clean heart so what is the name of the one you have first create in me a clean heart not a heart I'm not praying for a heart I am praying for a clean heart oh God and renew a right spirit he uses the word clean. He uses the word right. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Three more verses. Cast me not away from your presence. I will explain to you the meaning of this. Because this statement right here is how the clean heart will be created. Are you following now? The possibility of having a clean heart created depends on your encounter and your intimacy. He says, do not rob me of the privilege of having access to your presence. Remember, Moses prayed this same prayer. Don't let your presence go away from us. Moses was the meekest man. This one was a man after God's heart. Two of them, it was presence dependent. And take not your Holy Spirit from me. Verse 12 restore unto me the joy of salvation and uphold me with the free spirit 13 it says then then only when i have gone through this i will be able to teach transgressors your ways because he's saying i'm not the only one with this tendency so let me make myself the guinea pig to pass through this and explore in the spirit and know what it takes to command victory as a result of my own victory i will teach transgressors your ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee is someone learning first john chapter 1 from verse 8 to 10 apostle john is speaking still about the state of man he said if we say we have no sin he didn't say if i say i have no sin he said we everybody listening and everybody who will read if we say we have no sin he said we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us nine but if we confess our sins he says he god now is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness verse 10 if we say that we have not sinned we make him a liar and his word is not in us if someone is following say amen, amen. these two scriptures in without any sense of ambiguity they describe for you the tendency of every man regardless the effort you make in yourself and by your strength to remedy that situation in iniquity did my mother conceive me there are many people who carry children as babies begin to grow 
in holy families that love the Lord. A baby is growing and you look at him and say, baby, how are you? He slaps you with his hand and while you cry, he's laughing. In iniquity did my mother conceive me. This is a baby that has not done anything. He will whine his tiny hand and give you a slap and you pretend like you are crying and the baby is laughing. Then he slaps you again. Where did that possibility come from? It was not outsourced. It was activated. Now, let me tell you how sin and the flesh works. It doesn't come from outside. It is within, but it needs an external activation system. And it can wait patiently for many decades. So, you can be deceived to think because it has not manifested, it is not in you. Are we together? The Bible here tells us to not wait until the things that can activate what is locked up within us come because it may come at a time when your reputation is at stake it may come at a time when you are 30 years 50 years in ministry it may come at a time where you have two more years to finish with dignity and then something just comes and cancels out all the years let me tell you the truth when you understand what I'm teaching you, you will know that everyone that God is using, you owe them your prayer and your intercession. That prayer that God will keep and preserve people to the end is better than buying a car and giving someone. Is someone learning? Watch this now. So the Bible talks about the state of man. The next thing we should look at is God's standard. There is a standard for intimacy and friendship with God. Now, this is the challenge sometimes, respectfully speaking, with some of the gospels that we receive in the body of Christ that makes you just believe that friendship and intimacy with God has no conditions. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but let me tell you sincerely, not everyone can become the friend of God and not everyone can access that realm, can ascend to that realm of depth and intimacy with God except and unless you fulfill the conditions regardless what time we are living in whether it's 21st century 20th century whatever century we are living in the standards of God as far as friendship and intimacy is concerned will never change what are his standards Psalm 24 verse 3 and 4 Psalm 24 verse 3 and 4 gives us the standard of God as far as friendship with God and intimacy with God is concerned. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord and who shall stand in his holy place? The answer, next verse. He that has clean hands, a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. That's the condition the Bible gives. Ephesians chapter 4. Let's read from verse 17. If God is speaking to you, say amen. amen. Pay attention now. Let's read. It says, This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. Keep reading. Verse, next verse. Having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past, who being past feeling have given themselves over to lasciviousness, to walk all on cleanness with greediness. 20. But ye have not so learned Christ. Uh-huh. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Keep reading. That ye put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. Watch the things he says to put off now. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Uh -huh. And be ye renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that ye put on the new man, which is after God recreated in righteousness and true holiness. 25. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye 
angry and sin not. Paul had to find a way of saying, how do I say this now? Will I really say, don't be angry? How many times was Paul angry himself? You will see it in his epistles. He said, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. 27. Neither give place to the devil. Next verse. Reading to 32. Let him that stole. Before you say still no more, there must be him that stole. Rather let him labor working with his hands. The thing that is good that he may give to him that needed. 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers next verse it says and grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption two more verses let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you and all malice 32 it says and be ye kind one to another tender hearted forgiving one another even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you now look up please let me tell you something that um, I have I have observed sadly with the body of Christ it looks like for you to gain respect and to be looked at as a man of integrity you have to be a preacher of righteousness and to deal with all of these things but the the trouble here is that most times in discussing the subject of the flesh what we men of God do and that extends to fathers in their families leaders generally is that we line up all the attributes of the flesh and find the ones that we are guilty of then we exempt them in our discussion so if I have a problem, I, I, are we together now? Yes. If you have a problem with stealing and money and you have collected money from politicians, when I'm hammering on the issue of flesh, I will nicely dodge away the issue of corruption and lash out on things like immorality and the rest and say, be a person of character. When you are training people to be men and women who die to the flesh, there has to be a holistic capture of everything that needs to fall off until people become people of spiritual stature. Are we together now? Very important. It's a mistake that we make and it's not because we are bad. It's just that sometimes we are weak as men. So when you have an issue, maybe issue of morality and whatever, when you are dealing with issues of flesh, you will hit issues of pride, issues of bribery and just brush away the weightier matters. That is how Many people have been addressing the issue of the flesh. That is why believers have not been empowered to deal with it. Watch this. Many of you here are virologists, microbiologists. How do you deal when they say a virus or a disease is out? What do you do? You don't run away from it. The first thing you do, medical science teaches us that you isolate that uh, whatever it is. Am I right on that? And you begin to study its operation. You now study if this is a virus, how does it work in the human body? Now you begin to learn how it works. And sometimes you can now use several parameters to come up with an antidote. Running away from the reality of that virus will not cure it. When the pandemic came, many people were, as much as we were having social distance, there were people who were close to the COVID themselves. They had to be close to it to come up with a vaccine. Is someone learning now? So, just talking about the issues of the flesh and running away from it without examining the intrinsic nature of man and looking at a scriptural solution that provides victory, we will only be, we will only be programming casualties again and again and again. The Bible already comes to the conclusion, to the hearing of all, that man unassisted by God has tendencies you are not even aware of. Are we together? The Bible talks about Jesus. One day he entered into the temple and he saw people making merchandise of his father's temple. You know what Jesus did? He went out as if he was going out of the temple. 
the Bible says he got a whip and he came and began to flog them and threw the, the, the table of the money changers. And he said, the house of my father should be a place of prayer and you have turned it into a den of robbers. Look at that kind of zeal overturning tables. Many of you are legal practitioners here. If you sue Jesus to court, how will you judge that case? You will say, Jesus, you are not Caesar. Jesus, you are not the Herod. What authority did you have to turn their tables? You would have reported them. When Jesus, you need to know why Jesus is still interceding for us, even though he has died. Because when he walked as a man and went through the things that men went through, he had to go back with his body as a man. And even while he was seated, everything is done. He said, I will still intercede. In other words, that ministry of advocacy, he will say, Father, I know exactly what that man of God is going through. Because when I went to Jerusalem, I know what it means to give people bread. And they say, crucify him tomorrow. That man's anger, please do not put it as an offense against him. I have an, un I, I, I understand what it means. That's what it means to be a high priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. Please listen very carefully and learn. It's easy for you to look at a man and say this man is a wicked man. Hushed to all his children until you find out the story of that man's anger. You will find out that at 18, that man was one of the most gentle person you will ever find. But all the siblings and everybody died and they left him with 30 children to raise all of them. That was the origin of that anger. The anger was in him, but there was nothing to activate it. And because it was not dealt with by the strength of the spirit, the presence of 30 children versus their school fees and a job that is the, the salary keeps declining is what activated that. No wonder a couple will get married and a woman will turn and say, this is not the man I married. Let me tell you, that's the man you married. It's just that what the, the activation system, when you see a man nice to his wife and say, I will never touch you, he's talking nonsense. If you are speaking by the agency of the spirit, you are right. But if you mean just because I love you, keep watching, your heart is listening to you. The day that something will happen, a man called me one time, I think there was a year that the man reached me, true story. A small boy went to kick a car, kick the man's car, you know children and all these their things, and he just crashed the car through a fence. The man was thinking of how to beat and kill this child. How do I start? It's not whether I would do it, I'm thinking of how I'm going to start killing this child. So when you are an onlooker, you will say, what kind of an angry man is this? Whereas the same thing in him is in you. Waiting for an opportunity to come out. Why is this person jealous? Why is there jealousy among men of God? Why can't they just walk as one? Don't worry. Say you are about to start ministry. By the time you start ministry and after 10 years you have only 3 members. You will know why people get angry. This is not an issue of good or bad. It's an issue of the human nature that has not been examined to be understood. When you go to pastor's conferences and you see men of God crying, the man of God just raises a song of worship and you see a pastor rolling. Let me tell you why he's rolling. He's rolling because after 20 years of ministry, he does not even understand himself again. He's sitting before the presence of God and saying, Lord, who am I? You have to answer me now. I thought I knew myself 20 years ago, but right now I don't even know who I am again. Let me tell you sincerely, everything you ever see that manifests did not come in. It was always there. But there is a system God has provided to be able to tame the flesh with understanding. Not in the strength of the flesh. Taming the flesh the, in the strength of the flesh is a total waste of time. It's like trying to push a wall. You are the one who will be tired. Is someone learning now? Apostle, me, I'm a man of integrity. What has tested you? 
apostle I don't I don't like with me the kind of grace God gave me if I see women they are like trees <laughs> and men too vice versa even if one billion naira is given to me I won't collect it and your heart is saying it's because we have not gone together it's only your mind that has gone. That's why your mind refused to collect it. Let your heart follow your body when you see that money. Especially when your loved one is in the hospital. Say, my son, is this how you will leave me to die? Then you will now know why the young lady started following one man for money. And mercy will be in your heart. You will no longer say, all these ladies moving around. Because you had the privilege of a family that could support you. I'm not excusing licentiousness. You get my point. I'm revealing to you something about the state of man. So many people say this guy just became bad. Or this pastor changed. Or this businessman changed. No, you got it wrong. In iniquity did my mother conceive me. By the time you start a revival, you know, most people who start ministries, maybe fellowships and the rest, provided it's a small fellowship where people meet under a tree. There's no reason for jealousy and pain and what everybody's just praying. So you pray, there's no basket to drop offering, so there is no thief to pick anything. But that does not mean among the prayer warriors there is no thief. Generational causes, demons and wicked spirits hiding while you are praying. And the day somebody comes and says, I want to donate 500,000 to this small fellowship. Someone will say, what? was Judas always bad? You are wrong. Yes. The problem is that what was in him? Do you know the kind of screening he must have gone through to be Jesus' treasurer? Remember Jesus prayed all night before he got the disciples. And not even Peter was given the basket. You don't know the kind of offering people gave Jesus. That's why you are talking a woman who comes to break one year's salary at his feet. Look at Gehazi. When Gehazi saw what they gave um, Elisha, Gehazi went back and said, hold on, please. My master is a stupid man. He doesn't know that I work with him. Even if you don't want much, you, a king gives you this gift. And Elisha said, was my spirit not with you? So Jesus looks at Nathaniel, who just finished criticizing him, and hear Jesus' verdict. He's an Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. How could you say that about that man? There are many people today who look like drunkards. But let me tell you, they are more of stature in terms of the purity of their heart than several people. Because by their strength, they have tried to patch away a lot of evil. This is the one that trapped them. But there are many people who were born again. It was with scripture they came out. They came out with their father prophesying on their mother. You shall not die. That's how they came out. And from that day and still in the atmosphere of the anointing. Only God knows the possibilities that is within their hearts. In iniquity did my mother conceive me. Listen, this, this revelation bar puts you in a position immediately where the presence of God does not become a church thing again. In other words, you are saying, Lord, I don't even know the variety of tendencies that are hiding within me. Apostle, I don't drink. I will never drink. It depends on what was given you before that time. It's all this, this thing that caused ill health and death. Will you drink it? Your fear alone will make you look like you are disciplined. There are many people who are not disciplined. They are just afraid. And that fear is because of ignorance and low level orientation. By the time you enter a king's palace and see the delicacy that is in a king's palace, you will respect Daniel for saying he will not, he purposed in his heart that he will not corrupt himself with the king's meat. Before you say amen, find out what is the king's meat. Have you seen a king's table before? Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The heart of man, the nature of man's heart, please listen, is the biggest limitation 
to that man's rising and also to the program of God. And if you do not understand how to administer this prayer, create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. I give you an assurance. I hate to be the bearer of bad, a bad news, but you'll be surprised. A man of God who goes to get charms to do ministry, it's easy for you to stand and say, all these people serve, they get charms. Until you find out the pressure that is upon him. That man will tell you at age 15, people vowed that I will never make it. And out of that, they delved into all kinds of things. And now they've messed up their lives with all kinds of superstition and demonic activities. Nevertheless, God's standard will never change. Are we together? To be a friend of God and to access the heal of the Lord. The Bible gives very clear conditions. And let me tell you, it is not within the power of any man unassisted by the Spirit to be able to attain that realm. This is the reason why Jesus looked at the zealous disciples. They went to preach for a few days and they returned back rejoicing. Remember the story? Even the devils were subject to us in your name. And Jesus said, what are you going through? You've not gone through anything. In the course of time, trouble started brewing. The trouble that started brewing was number one. Who was the greatest? Remember the story. And then somebody, the mother of James and John came to now start negotiating a position. And the other disciples had it and they were angry. You now see all the elements of flesh. One day they summoned courage and said, Jesus, listen, we have left all to follow you. We have respected you enough. What is in this for us? Jesus didn't turn and tell them, you are stupid and wicked people. He mm -mm. said, I know. Peter, who said, I love you one moment. And Jesus is telling him, get thee behind me, Peter. And then he said, Peter, Satan has desired. You didn't even know when he got into your heart to sift you like wheat. He said, but I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. When Peter denied Jesus Christ three times and ran away, he went back to fish. Do you know when Jesus resurrected, immediately, Jesus went to the seashore. If I'm Jesus, I'm sure I'll say, Peter, come. <laughs> and if you don't come and allow me walk on that water, you will know I'm the creator. But watch Jesus. Are we together? Peter came and saw him. Do you know Peter's verdict? Depart from me. I am a sinner, an unclean person. And Jesus said, no, sit down. Then he asked a question. When they ate fish, he said, lovest thou me? He said, Peter, Simon, but Jonah, lovest thou me more than this? Peter said, I love you. Jesus never said it's a lie. He said, feed my lamb. After he spoke, the disciples, their blood was hot. They were boiling to start evangelism. He said, tarry. Don't you leave that upper room. If not, in two days, you will go back. Remember what happened within three days. Help them, please. Do not, please, let me have your attention. Are we together now? Tarry. There are many people, listen, believers, let me teach you something. There are many promotions and open doors that are closed to, doors that should be open that are close today, not by the devil. I have told you this thing. Not every manifestation that carries a semblance of evil is evil. There are many of them that is an expression of God's mercy to preserve you because you have been weighed in the spirit and you lack the stamina to survive that kind of thing if it comes. There are many of you today who do not have jobs or do not have an opportunity to go abroad. I'm telling you it's not because the prayer of the man of God is not working. It is a sign of God's mercy to keep you quietly. That's why the Bible says in all things to give thanks because you don't even know what God is doing. Imagine if I came to Abuja in 2013. Only God knows what would have happened now. Maybe I would have died by now and a story would have been written. One man of God who left Zaria and came and within one year, when they gave him one billion, something happened to his head and that's the end of it. Young ministers, let this be a lesson. Wait for God's timing. 
at the end of your life, your life will be an inspiration to the next generation or a warning that when people want to say, hear God, they will say, make sure you don't hear like this person. Is God teaching someone now? There are many things you are complaining about. At the end of this service, you will need to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you that I did not get that job. Thank you that that person who was asking me to come to Europe, I didn't get my visa because that person was training prostitutes in Europe, not a job. I was desperate to get out of Nigeria, yet I cannot pray for two hours. And then you want to go to a land where people can walk naked and not matter. Whereas you are in a place where people are covered from head to toe. You are still not all right. <laughs> Listen, look at me. Ladies and gentlemen, please look at me. Let me tell you sincerely. Let me tell you sincerely. Until and unless our generation understands the construct, the intrinsic weakness that is in man. That's why when God looks at man who ignores him, he calls it pride. You know why it is pride? Because the Bible says he knows that we are dust. Do you know how dust is? Does it have the power to keep itself against the wind? Go to the desert and see how wind plays with dust. That's how man is. So it is pride for dust to just sit down and say, God, I don't need you. I went to school. I have the power to keep myself. MOG, hear the word of the Lord now, early enough, before you begin to establish branches. There are certain levels of honor and increase and grace. When it comes to your life, you will be surprised you will not pray for one month and you will not think it's wrong. Because what is wrong? Whether you pray for one month or not, there's an alert coming every day. The Lord led me to give you 100 million. Another person will say, the Lord led me to give you 500 million. And you say, so this is my life. I'm now a rich man. God, that suffering that led me to pray and fast is over. You sing that my yakare song for him. He say, it's over, over with you. I'm tired. I see you as a luggage. It's over. And then God says, let me respect you. And the first time you step out, that's when you will learn that armed robbers look for rich men. And that's when you will learn that ritualists are looking for exactly those kind of people. Are we together? Yes, sir. There are many people who rise to certain levels in their families. Then they start having certain dreams. And someone just appears to you and says, listen, just to inform you that you are welcome. We have been watching you. The same way we followed your father, we are coming after you. And you say, what happened to me? They were always there. They were only waiting for who rises to that spiritual level. There are some prayers and spiritual activities that don't just send Satan away. It brings him. Look at the prayer and fasting of Jesus. When Jesus was done praying and fasting, it was Satan who came. Please listen to what I'm telling you. This is the voice of the Spirit. Man, unassisted by God, does not have the power to host and sustain the revival coming. I'm saying this to you. I learned this in my own life and even in this ministry. I handed this ministry long ago to God. And even though administration demands that we do the work of oversight and blessing God's people, believe me when I tell you that this ministry belongs to the Lord. It's not a false humility from a man of God. If this ministry belongs to me, I will not survive one week. Are we together? You think it's everybody who sends me a text message who is saying, Apostle, God bless you, you'll be surprised. Sometimes I will wake up tired from a conference, just open my text and you will see a long message warning to you from the Lord. People are calling you now and you cannot pick. You think you're a proud person. I just say, oh God, look at this now. How can somebody call you 10 or 20 times and you don't pick? Who do you think you are? Or the apostle they told me about is not the one I'm seeing. <laughs> now imagine that I call the person twice. Okay, let's talk. You don't know me. A revival is coming. Many people are jumping and shouting a revival is coming. But they are not paying attention to the kind of stature it takes. Do you know how heavy a revival is? A revival comes with criticisms. 
A revival comes with you being misunderstood. Are you ready to survive that for his name? Find out people who were matired. I've told you, you know how many people were matired as, as at the end of this year? When they were praying during the crossover, they said in the name of Jesus, by 2022 December, I will still be there. And yet for the sake of the gospel today, they have gone. Not for the sake of carelessness. Some of them stood face to face with enemies and they said, denounce your faith. It's not like a newspaper, you are going to build an institution and name it after them. And they said, no, I will stand for Jesus. We are giving you two more minutes to think about it. And they made up their mind. They said, no. Nina Yesune, Bazankoma, Bazankoma, Bayaba. Nina Yesune, Bazankoma, Bazankoma, Bayaba. Nasa Hanuna, Akanke Kenoma. My apologies, you hear me sing a lot of songs in house these days. It's just a song that comes to my spirit relating to what I'm saying. 